Hey guys and welcome to 10 great money making methods that involve combat. Now unlike my previous top 10 combat money making methods video in 2018, in this video I am going to be including some bosses. So when you're ready grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. At number 10 we have spiritual warriors and yes we are starting off strong with a money making method that can net you 5.5 million GP per hour or more. However, this money is easier made in the player-owned Slayer dungeon. Now, the main money you make from the Spiritual Warriors is actually crushed or high alk by the Spring Cleaner if you have that option available to you. However, they also drop a variety of super potions, which you can note using magic notepaper to add to your profits. Doing them in the player-owned Slayer dungeon is a bit more relaxing, however, it will require you to have level 99 Slayer to use, as this is the requirement for the Sunken Pyramid. Doing them in here, I recommend you use Ghost Hunter gear to maximize your damage against the undead, because Spiritual Warriors are undead, or ghosts. A Salve Amulet or Salve Amulet E will also help out, and I must say, they are really, really good money. I didn't expect them to be this good in the player-owned Slayer dungeon, compared to the better for invention components, but bit worse place in the God Wars Dungeon 1 Zamorak encampment, as you have a lot of other mobs around you. They are also a great source of armor components or other components as they drop War Priest, and you can disassemble this War Priest to get even more War Priest for more components. Easy free precise 5, as I like to say. Now as this isn't a guide but a video covering the top 10 combat money making methods, I won't go too in depth into the actual player owned Slayer dungeon. I recommend you look up a separate guide instead. At number 9 we have Killing Muspa. Now Muspa are around 3 to 4 mil GP per hour. The main money you make is made by picking up the Dragon Drops, Elder Energy, and, of course, the rune salvage drop that you can high alk automatically using your spring cleaner or manually. Now, these do have a high quest requirement, requiring the desert treasure quest for ancient spells and the fate of the gods to access them. The footage you see on screen is provided to me by Plebshot, so thank you a lot for that, as I personally do not have access to these on my main account as of right now. Now, if you actually want to AFK the Muspa, you do not want to bring along your Shard of Zaros so that they do attack you. This way you can AFK a bit and they're very good magic experience, however you will still have to manually pick up most of the drops unless you have a legendary pet. Now as it's best to use Blood Barrage here, it will cost you a bit and cut into your profit, but these do still stay pretty good profit. Alternatively, if you're a lower level watching this video, if you want to kill a monster with similar profit, go for something like Frost Dragons. Number 8, we have doing Elite Dungeons. In the case of the clip on screen, it's Elite Dungeons 2. Now, Elite Dungeons 1, 2, and 3 are all great money. Elite Dungeons 1 is the best consistent money. Elite Dungeons 2 is very good money per hour, being 7.5 mil plus. And if you're capable of soloing, the money is even better, especially if you're a bit lucky with the mutated ability drops. And of course, Elite Dungeons 3 is very profitable as well, especially if you get lucky at the final boss being the Ambassador. Now, Elite Dungeons is really dependent on your luck. Elite Dungeons 1 is pretty hard in my opinion. Elite Dungeons 2 is the easiest, especially if you're with a friend or two to do it with. And if you're interested in actually learning Elite Dungeons 2 specifically, I do have a guide which I'll link in the description below. Now for Elite Dungeons 2 specifically, the main money you're going to be making is from the Draconic Energy and from the Onyx Dust. And of course all the other bones and stuff that is auto collected in the chest will add up in the end. And the main money is of course the Mutated Ability Codexes, which are worth 34, 76 and 106 mil GP, depending on which one you get. And to add on top of that, Elite Dungeons 2 is a lot of fun. Next up, we have killing creatures AFK or non-AFK in the Menaphos or Sophonem Slayer dungeon. Killing the corrupted creatures is very AFK as the loot is automatically stored in the chest if you set to do so, and you get some occasional keys of the crossing and kopeshes to add to that money per hour. This is super duper easy to do with aggression potions, and I've mentioned them before in my previous top 10 combat money making video and in a separate in depth guide. Now, apart from the corrupted creatures, you can also, for example, do Salakwa Axe. I, I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but they're good money as well. 
But with the low requirements and the extra AFKness, I'd say Corrupted Scorpions are your best bets requiring level 88 Slayer. At number 6 we have Firewatches. Now Firewatches are great money and even for Iron Man they're a great source of herbs and seeds. The main money you make from Vires is from the noted drops. And not only do you get money, you no, know, you get great common experience, 500k plus per hour, you get great prayer experience, 350k an hour, 200k fire making experience per hour, and 100k plus farming experience per hour if you have your seed aside. Now the way you get this extra experience is simply by bringing your sun spear to fire watches, and every time you kill a fire watch, fire lord, or fire lady, you will automatically cremate their corpses for 150 experience of fire making and 210 prayer experience. And since I'm personally still working my way up to unlocking fire watches myself, you guys are seeing some footage on screen provided by Arav and Plebshot, who thankfully both wanted to help out with the video. At number 5 we have my favourite non-AFK money making method as of right now, it's killing Nex both solo and duo. Now Nex is absolutely amazing money, I actually made a loot video covering 5 hours of duo Nex and I showed you guys the amount of money you could make per hour on average. Now Nex on average is actually around 10 mil per hour but sometimes you can get unlucky and therefore you will only make 7.5 mil on average. Though once you get one or two very good hours in, like I did recently, I got an hour where I made 30 million GP in a split and that's a total of 60 million GP made together combined in that one hour and you can have hours like that occasionally if you get drops like a Tova Play Buddy or Vita's Robe Top or Legs, drops that are worth 25 mil plus. Now as for the standard drops, Nexus is pretty pretty bad apart from the occasional green dragon high drop or onyx bolts e which are worth 3 million or something which is a decent drop however the main money you will be making at next will be from the rares and if you get lucky and you get the good stuff instead of something like a virtus book which isn't worth that much money you'll be making absolute bank at number 4 we have killing Capsarius in your player owned Slayer dungeon. Now when I made my loot video on 5 AFK hours of Verarius, someone came towards me in my discord saying I should try out Capsarius in the player owned Slayer dungeon. This player who then goes by the name of Majin Buu offered me to test it in his player owned Slayer dungeon where he had 4 Capsarius located and I tried it out and oh boy is it good money. You can make anywhere from 3 to 5 million GP per hour here depending on your luck with the keystones. If you get a lot of Primus keystones which are worth 500k plus, you're going to make absolute bank per hour here. I think on average you could get about 12 to 14 keystones here depending on your luck and if most of those are Primus keystones, you are going to make absolute bank. These are definitely a great way of gaining money, fully AFK in Legacy, the setup is on screen and if you guys want a full guide I might make one in the future. One more thing to note though, the player owned Slayer dungeon does require level 99 Slayer and if you want to use your own dungeon instead of someone else's you will have to gather the souls yourself which may take you quite some time. At number 3 we have Abyssal Demons, and oh boy have I mentioned these a lot, and oh boy have I camped these a lot, but they're just so damn good. They're 600k plus melee experience power or 550k plus magic experience power, they're absolutely great experience, you can get Slayer experience, and they're awesome money, as they have consistent salvage drops and noted drops which you can area loot. The reason I put Abyssal Demons at number 3 is because this list is in no particular order. As Abyssal Demons are 4.5 to 6 million GP per hour even post rework. Now this all depends on your gear, I suppose if you're a mid level player and you're not using aggression potions or something they will be 2 to 3 mil GP per hour but if you're a high level player using the same setup as I use in my guides you can easily make 4.5 mil GP per hour and on top of all the money and combat experience you also get a ton of Crimson Charms per hour being 200 plus which equals into a lot of summoning experience power, which is just another extra benefit from killing Abyssal Demons. Now the requirements to kill Abyssal Demons are 85 Slayer to actually even do damage against them, and I'd suggest 85 plus combat stats as well to kill them somewhat efficiently. At number 2 we have a great high level PVM moneymaker, Farago. The footage you are seeing on screen is a trio Virago kill by an active member in my discord server called Nixia. 
Farago is a consistent moneymaker thanks to the tectonic energy drops which are worth around 1 million GP each. And with the occasional seismic wand or singularity drop you can make even more money. Usually Farago is done duo or trio. If the team is larger, like 4 or 5 man, that team probably has 2 extra learners with them, or DPSers, to get them familiarized with the boss. Doing Virago with more than 3 people that know what they are doing is going to cut down into your consistent money made from the tectonic energy, however with Duo you can expect around 20 million GP per hour being around 4 kills per hour and with a decent trio 15 million GP per hour about 5 kills per hour. So yeah Virago is a very good high level PVM money maker. And at number 1 we probably have the best money maker in game but also the hardest to get into. It's killing Telos, the hardest solo boss in RuneScape. Now this boss can net you so much GP if you can get consistent streaks at higher end rages. Now the money at Telos varies depending on skill, streaks and enrage. The money can range from 50 million GP per hour to 50 million plus per hour for the top PVMers out there. Now on screen now are two loot chests containing 1 bill and 3 billion or more GP and that really shows you how much money you can make at Telos if you're really good. Now sadly the actual orbs don't get added in the total value of the chest and that's why I added some text right there to show you guys how much those chests are actually worth. According to PVMers in the PVMing community that are really good at Telos you can even make up to 80 million GP per hour. But you mustn't forget that Telos is a very hard boss and to learn this boss you're going to have to use a lot of money in death costs and onyx costs for your ring of death to learn the actual boss. Cause Telos ain't easy. I mean I can't do Telos myself and that's why you're seeing footage from Plebshot on screen instead. So yeah, Telos is a amazing money maker. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And if you watched the video till the end, be sure to comment your favorite tea flavor down below. Catch you guys later. Peace.